What's going on everybody and welcome back to Meadow Green Homesteading. So in today's video we're going to be discussing the breed of pig that we chose for our homestead. So if you're looking to get into swine, let me introduce you to the breed of pig that for us checked all the boxes. All right, so before we begin the video, there are a few terms that I briefly want to go over real quick because not everybody has heard these terms, so it's just good to familiarize everybody with them. The first term is going to be gilt, and all a gilt is is a female pig. So when a female pig is born, she is considered a gilt up until the point where she has her first litter or what we call farrowed. When a pig is born male, it is considered a boar as he is uncastrated. If you then castrate that male, he is considered to be a barrow. There are several different reasons why you want to castrate a boar, namely for meat production, but up until that point, he is considered a boar. We have one barrow and one boar on our farm. The barrow for us is going to be for meat production, and then the boar we're keeping for succession breedings. So now that we have all that out of the way, let's talk about the four main considerations that we had when we were selecting a breed of pig to fit our homestead, which is about 20 acres, half of which is wooded, and then half of which is pasture. So our four considerations are in no particular order, but we're going to start off with friendliness. And friendliness was something that was very important to us because we like to spend a lot of time on our farm, obviously, and in our barn, in the paddocks, petting our animals. And we wanted a pig that we could go in and interact with without them being scared of us or us being scared of them. If you haven't figured it out by now, we chose obviously the Berkshire breed in the end. And Berkshires are just very well known for their docile behavior. They're friendly and playful personalities, and they're just general inquisitiveness and curiosity. For example, at any point in the day, we can come up here, which we come up multiple times a day, and they're out in the mud, they're out running the fence line, they're eating grass, they're playing with each other. They're just an absolute blast to watch. So we like to spend time with them. We do go in, we interact with them, we pet them at least three to four times a day. A general disclaimer though, if you have large animals on your farm, there's always a chance that you can get hurt. So even though I say that Berkshires are docile, they do get big, any breed of pig can get big and they can step on you and push you around. So just use a general good oversight of personal protection whenever you're getting inside a stall or a pen or a paddock with a large animal. So on the topic of size, our second consideration was going to be size. We wanted a breed of pig that stayed around that medium size for us. As our homestead has about 10 acres of pasture and just general farm area, we are going to eventually have livestock and other things on our farm. So we didn't have a lot of room for a large breed of pig. So size was an important consideration for us. So for Berkshires, gilts typically top out around 500 pounds or 220 kilograms. While Boars reach around 600 pounds, or about 280 kilograms. If you're looking to raise Berkshires for meat production, they do typically end up somewhere around 275 pounds, well, whether it's a gilt or a barrel between a six and seven month period. In our case, the grow time will likely be around 10 months as we try and play around exactly with the rate at which we feed them and the type of feed that we're providing for them. And the type of feed that you feed them is very important and that leads us to our third consideration was the quality of meat. We wanted a high quality heritage breed that had tons of flavor, something that eventually when we begin to sell is going to draw in people and make them keep coming back over and over again and something that we also enjoyed. Our mission statement here at Meadow Green Farm is to raise and sell high quality meats from heritage breeds raised naturally. All three points of which the Berkshire absolutely checks Berkshire meat is quickly growing in popularity as people continue to find out what real pork is supposed to taste like. And Berkshire meat is special. It looks different than the pork that many people know because years ago as taste changed, modern hogs were bred to have very little fat, which is why most pork is more akin to chicken these days, hence the term the other white meat, a phrase that was coined in the 80s and came to dominance. But Berkshire pork is succulent with a distinctive porky flavor. The meat from a Berkshire hog is redder than conventional pork and somewhat sweeter. It is laced with what you would call intramuscular fat, which is very similar to Wagyu beef, which makes it much more tender and juicy. And this is the way that pork is supposed to be. So typically, once people try good pork like from a Berkshire, 
they have a very hard time going back to the other white meat that they were used to. Our fourth consideration for selecting a breed was going to be history. And this can be something that's a little bit subjective, but it was important to us. We wanted a breed of pig that had a great backstory behind it and something that, um, you know, just added to the allure of the breed and maybe made it a little bit easier to sell where we are. Because where we are, there are a lot of Tamworth, Old Spot, Red Wattles, but there are only a few people that I know that are growing out Berkshires. So we wanted the ability to be able to grow out a Berkshire for meat, but also sell growers, which are piglets sold to other people who want to grow them out, you know, for meat. And I love a backstory, whether it's an old patina truck, an old barn, or in this case, a particular breed of animal. And when we came across the Berkshire breed and started reading about its rich history, sought after cuts of meats and their ability to thrive on a small scale homestead, we just knew that we had to know more. So let's take a quick spin through the history of the Berkshire and learn a little bit about what makes them so great. As one of the oldest identifiable breeds, the Berkshire hog originated from the county of Berkshire in England. It was said to be discovered by the English statesman Oliver Cromwell's army, from which veterans brought back to the outside world stories of the wonderful hogs of Berks and the feasts that they had. Over the next couple hundred years, humans began to change the Berkshire's genetics, introducing Chinese and Siamese blood into the breed, which gave it that look as we know it now. This introduction reduced the overall size, it shortened the hog, and added the white points to its tail, feet, and snout, as well as gave us that pronounced dish face with a little snub nose. As you can see here in this image of our beautiful gilt Reba, those markings have stayed true all the way to present time. And the bulk of this breeding work was done somewhere in the 1820s and 1830s, around the times that Berkshires were starting to make their way to the United States, being imported at the beginning or somewhere around 1823. In 1875, the first group of Berkshire breeders was established in Springfield, Illinois. They are known as the American Berkshire Association, and they still set the standard for Berkshire genetics today. Most people today, when asked about Berkshire's hog, have never even heard of them or don't know what they are. So why would such a highly touted hog breed simply be forgotten to the point of where most people have never heard of it anymore? Well, like much the story of things these days, early in the 1950s and into the 60s, as industrial hog production moved towards leaner, whiter breeds for meat production, the Berkshire's numbers started to fall off drastically. This left the fate of the Berkshire's future into the small farms, the enthusiasts and organizations, such as the British Pig Association and Rare Breed Survival Trust. But survival of this breed is not simply about sentiment. Apart from the emotional need to conserve that many enthusiasts feel, there is actually a fundamental requirement to maintaining healthy stock numbers of Berkshires. That is because traditional breeds like the Berkshire hold the genetic foundation on which modern commercial hybrid pigs were and are continuing to be built. Now say somewhere in the future we have a crazy situation where we have to rebuild the industrial hog population or just reinvigorate that population. Berkshires would absolutely be used once again as the building blocks for that population may seem like a crazy situation, but does it really sound so crazy with the way that things are these days? So quite simply, Berkshire pigs are a straightforward breed to manage with a great story behind them. They have dark hair, which protects them from the sun rays. They do well in inclement weather. They eat less than larger breeds and they are reasonably resistant to just common pig related diseases. And they are well suited for the family environment. And when we first started looking for Berkshires back in January of 2023, uh, we were actually fortunate to meet up with somebody um, on Facebook by the name of Kenneth, who we've become good friends with now. And Kenneth was actually in the situation where he had two sows who were farrowing. So we were actually able to purchase two gilts and one barrow from Kenneth. Uh, we went down the first week of February of this year and got to pay them a visit. So Kenneth was very kind. He allowed us to come down and check out his living situation and check out the pigs even before we bought them. So. He was exactly what you are or should be looking for when you're looking for a pig breeder. So let's just talk about that real quick. When you're looking for a pig breeder um, and you're looking for a genetic line to bring back to your farm and do successive genetic breedings with, you want to pick out a breeder that has a good clean facility. You want a breeder that has taken very good care of the pigs. You don't want pigs that, um, or I should say you do want pigs that have nice bright eyes they don't have red eyes they don't look lethargic they're not underweight they're not overweight they have good clean living conditions 
and Kenneth just checked off all those boxes. He had a great situation. His hogs look really good. He's a super nice guy. Very important if you're going to be doing successive breedings to figure out exactly what you're getting and make sure that you get good genetics. In this case with Doc, his parents actually came from or lived in Ohio and were registered Berkshires. So although he's not registered, you can tell by his markings and everything that he's a very good quality uh, boar. And the piglets that we got from Kenneth are the same way. If you're going to look to purchase a pig, you definitely want to find a piglet or piglets that are in with other pigs. It is very difficult to kind of size up and judge a pig on whether or not that pig is healthy if it's not in with other pigs. If it's by itself, it's it's hard even for a very experienced person to do. So just a word of advice if you were looking to buy pigs, just make sure it's in with other pigs. It just kind of gives you a better layout of the land and, and you can assess the situation a little bit better. Well guys, I think that's going to be enough about the history and why we chose the Berkshire pig. The history of the Berkshire is very rich. We could do a whole full-blown video about the history of the Berkshire. I mean, it's just it's very rich history, great stories. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't mention, but we'll save that for another video. If you like this video, hit the like button for us. It helps us out a lot. And if you want to watch our homestead grow, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But until next time, we hope you have a great day.